skip to this timestamp to watch the tutorial. I love PC VR, but finding an affordable headset is hard these days. Basically, the only option is a Quest 2 or a Quest 3, which are not PC VR headsets. Usually, you would use Quest Link or Air Link to connect to your PC. However, these have stability and latency issues. Not to mention, they have the usual bloat or unreliability of corporate applications. However, we do have an alternative. Steam Link is Valve's free PC VR streaming alternative. It is pretty great, however, you can only use it over Wi-Fi. Or can you? I found a way to run Steam Link over USB. Now you might be thinking, why would you use Steam Link instead of just Quest Link? since Quest Link is designed to work over USB. Very true, and honestly, like if you're not super technically inclined, you might want to stick to Quest Link. However, in my case, I've found that Steam Link generally has super, super low latency. That's almost near real time. It has less overhead, which specifically means that FPS VR reports about one millisecond less while using Steam Link, and the Oculus Dash doesn't have to run, which notoriously kind of uses a ton of resources like VRAM and extra processing. Also, there's a cool little beta running right now where you can use finger tracking. Besides that, Steam Link has a much more robust debugging tool, which Quest Link just doesn't have at all, to my knowledge. Also, in FPS VR, my headset battery is more accurately reported. Also, you can open your standalone headsets dashboard while using the PC, which can be useful sometimes. Of course, while that is all great, there are still some downsides to it. I still need to do some testing and spend some time with it, and I might make a follow-up video. However, these are some of the things I noticed when using Steam Link. Sometimes there will be some small stutters, which kind of seem to depend on CPU usage. So for example, if I'm in an, a VRChat instance with friends, it'll kind of increase the latency and then every now and then I might get like a hiccup frame or something, but it's not unreliable my, by any means. It is a little bit finicky to set up. The startup process to get in VR every day is a little bit more complex. Usually with Questlink, you kind of just plug it in and then connect and it kind of just works. It also has a much more complex uh, install setup than Questlink. In some cases, I've noticed the tracking kind of just die. However, I think this might be due to low light in my room. It doesn't happen super frequently, but it still happens sometimes, and I gotta figure out why. And then the only other thing is that the microphone audio is a little bit worse. I think Questlink does some sort of processing to make the microphone sound better, and the Steam Link one kind of sounds lower bitrate, and it doesn't have any filtering. Overall, I think the setup is pretty great, and it really opens up a lot of opportunity for PC VR features as Steam Link evolves. Not only that, but you should theoretically be able to run Virtual Desktop or ALVR as well. However, there is one thing to note. If you have the money to spend on an Ethernet plus PD power to USB-C adapter, you should probably try that instead, especially if you have a Quest 3 or a Quest Pro. This would allow you to give your Quest an Ethernet connection, which would likely be even more stable and less headache than this USB solution. I have a friend who tried out one of these adapters on his Quest 3 and it seemed to work for him. However, me on a Quest 2 was not able to get it to work. There is a huge disclaimer for this video. These steps are a general guide and not a specific step-by-step -step tutorial. There may be more steps involved that require following prompts or extra steps that I was not able to cover here, primarily involved with getting the MetaQuest Developer Hub running since you need an account. But with that out of the way, here's the tutorial. First, you will download the MetaQuest Developer Hub. It is developer.oculus.com forward slash meta-quest-developer-hub. If you search for it through Google, you will probably not find it. Download for the platform you want. After it's done downloading, open up the zip file and run the exe. Next, you're going to search for Geniretet. G-N-I-R-E-H-T-E-T. -E -E it is this one from Jenny Mobile or Geni Mobile. On the right side here, you can click releases and then use whatever platform you have. I would recommend the 
Rust version, not the Java version. So in this case, it's going to be Rust Win64. Open the Ganyarita zip folder and then put this folder into wherever you want it to be. For example, I have my own programs folder. Once you have your Ganyaratet folder extracted, you should try to find the MetaQuest Developer Hub folder. In my case, it's under C, Program Files, MetaQuest Developer Hub. And then you go to Resources, Bin, and you're going to copy over the ADB uh, executable. In this case, I'm specifically going to do AAPT2, ADB, uh, the WinAPI DLL, the WinAPI USB, uh, and that's it. You can just drag those over. Next, you're going to right-click on ganiratet.exe, at least for Windows, and create a shortcut. Once the shortcut is created, right-click on it and go to Properties. And then in the target line, if you go to the end, where it says ganiratet.exe, add a space and then type the word Relay. This will put ganiratet into Relay mode. Also, go to Compatibility and set it to run as administrator. In my case, it didn't work unless I ran it as administrator, and it also seemed to give my Quest headset internet access. Next, you should try to open up the MetaQuest Developer Hub, uh, and it will probably bother you about needing to create a developer account. If you go to developer.oculus.com forward slash sign dash up, you should be able to create your account. It's been a while since I've done it, and I don't really have the capability to make another account right now, but it should be pretty self-explanatory. There are some questions about like business stuff, but typically if you just put in whatever information you think is right, it should just work. Once you have that account created, you should be able to log into the MetaQuest Developer Hub. Now, to be clear, you may not actually need the MetaQuest Developer Hub. There might be a way to use ADB directly to the MetaQuest without um, actually using the Developer Hub, but I have not tried that and I'm not sure if that'll work. Once you have the Developer Hub running and you see this screen or something like it, try to run your Quest or turn on your Quest with the USB connection to your computer. Once your Quest boots, you should see something like this where the device is detected but it's not authorized. At this point, your Quest should prompt you about enabling debugging. First, you could try unplugging and replugging the USB cable. If that doesn't work, it may mean you don't have developer mode enabled. In that case, you want to go on your phone and install the Meta Horizons app if you haven't already. Once you have the app and you log in, you should be presented with a screen like this. If you go to your profile on the bottom and then click the hamburger menu and then go to devices and then click on your device, you should see this screen. And then you can go to Headset Settings, and you should be able to enable Developer Mode right here. Once you enable Developer Mode, it should be able to prompt you. And if it does not, you can try turning it off and back on again. Once you have your Quest connected with Debug Mode, you should see a screen like this where you can see your Quest and that it's active. Once you confirm that you have this page and that your Quest is connected, you can go to the Ganeratet folder. And you should see Ganeratet APK. Click and drag this onto the Quest Developer Hub, and you should be able to drop it into your Quest 2. Once you do that, it uploads that app to your Quest. Once the APK is uploaded, go to the Ganeratet GitHub. And then if you scroll down, there should be a section that shows the commands to run. In this case, we need a few of these, and I'll show you how to put them in the Developer Hub. So in this case, uh, on the developer hub, you should see here custom commands. You can create a command. I'm going to name this one Ganir uh, Atet uh, 1, as in the first command. You can name this whatever you want. There's two different commands we're going to have to do. First, we have to do a reverse. So copy this one and paste it in here, and then save. I already have mine here. And then Ganir Atet 2 is going to be, hold on. Near attach 2 is going to be this one, the shell one. However, very specifically, you need to click before the dash N and backspace until you get to there. Otherwise, it won't work. Then you save. And now those two commands are working. 
Optionally, I have this Gnirotet install command, which is adb install dash r gnirotet.apk. That probably doesn't really work, but it's not too bad to have it there. And then you're going to make a Gnirotet stop command. Same thing, uh, create Gnirotet stop. And then you're going to copy this one where it says this. And then same thing here, you're going to backspace the dash n and then press save. Once you have those commands set up, you should be able to run them. First, you're going to start your GNET relay. And then you'll see something like this. I'm going to run Gnirotet 1 first. And I'm going to run Gnirotet 2. If you put on your Quest headset, you should see a prompt to enable the Gnirotet VPN. Press accept or whatever it says. If you don't see a prompt, Go in your Quest headset to the library on the dock. Go to this drop down, and then go to unknown sources and try running this Gnirotet program. It might just close your dock, that's normal, and then try to run the two Gnirotet commands again. Once you confirm the VPN is running now, press the Gnirotet stop command. Once you've stopped Gnirotet, you can go to your settings and enable Wi-Fi and connect to your local Wi-Fi network. Once you are connected to your Wi-Fi, go to the store, and then you're going to search for Steam Link. Okay. Uh, once you get here, you should see an install button. If you want to try hand tracking and it has not been released to stable yet, you can go to your library after you've installed Steam Link. Go to the Steam Link card, click the three dots, and click Settings. And then under Installed Apps, you should see version information, and you can change your release channel. In this case, I'm using the public beta, which has a 2.0.11 for the hand tracking. Next, we're going to connect to your PC with Steam Link. First, to make sure that Steam is running on your computer and that you have Steam VR installed. Again, if you need the beta for hand tracking, you can install the Steam VR beta uh, through Steam. We're going to open Steam Link. Then you should see something like this, where you can select your desktop and press connect. If it tells you something about you not only being able to connect on a local network, that means that the uh, VPN or Gnirinet has not disconnected. In that case, you'll want to run your stop command again and then restart your headset. Also, turn off the relay if it's not turned off. Then you can try to connect. In this case, I'm going to connect. Okay. Now I'm connected through Steam Link on the Wi Fi. Once you've connected through Steam Link on your Wi Fi, start your GNET relay. Uh, run your Gnirotet 1 and then Gnirotet 2. Then you should see Steam Link kind of freeze for a few seconds and then it'll reconnect. And at that point, you are connected through USB. Once you are connected through USB, you can disable your Wi Fi just to make sure that it does not swap connections or anything. And there you go. Then, whenever you're done, I would recommend just running the Gnirotet stop command and then closing Steam Link on your headset. Also make sure to close your relay. Hello, human jump scare. Uh, thank you for watching the video. I would like to point out another disclaimer that I'm not saying this is like the best solution or that it'll work like perfectly, um, but it's at least like another option now, you know, instead of just having to use Wi-Fi or, uh, you know, Questlink. It's just another tool on your tool belt that you could use to possibly solve a problem. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you want to see more stuff like this, do consider subscribing. Uh, I do have a VR theater video that I do plan to put out soon.